Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first Market Managers Forum of the season. Um, today, we are going to be discussing, op discussing opening day, how to successfully kick off the farmer's market season by boosting social media skills and utilizing all of your great NMFMA member benefits. Uh, before we get started, I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm Scott Knauer. I am a marketing and technology specialist with NMFMA and uh, might have met some of you at our conference back in March up in Santa Fe. If not, it's a pleasure to meet you and thank you so much for joining us today. There we go. Uh, today, we have two great presenters from our team. First, Andrea Warner, our marketing manager liaison is going to be presenting on some of those membership benefits and how to get the most out of your market season. We're also joined by Jenna Marquez. She is our digital marketing specialist and she's going to be sharing some amazing tips on social media, highlighting what some of you are already doing out in the field uh, and maybe give you some ideas to do even more. Uh, before we jump into everything and hand it over to our presenters, um, we are recording today's session. So if you know of anyone uh, who is missing this, we're going to be sharing this recording with you probably within about the next day once we get that uploaded to YouTube. So we'll make sure everyone has the link. Um, we're also asking that you please keep your microphones muted until the presentation is over. Then we're going to open up Q&A and have a nice discussion with everyone at that time. Um, in the meantime, feel free to hit up the chat feature in the Zoom session, type your comments, tell us where you are joining us uh, from today in New Mexico. And uh, then after the presentation, we'll unmute and have a, a brief talk. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more updates from NMFMA, and we will be sure to keep you posted about upcoming training sessions. So without further ado, I uh, also want to highlight and thank Allison Penn for joining us. She is working the chat with us. She will be providing some helpful links as we dig in. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Andrea. So take it away. Thanks, Scott. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you here. I'm Andrea Warner, and I'm the uh, market manager liaison. That's the hat I'm wearing right now, the market manager liaison for the state. And I'm here to, um, with the organization to help market managers. If you have any questions or need any support throughout the year, you can always reach out to me. And I'm also the Double Up Food Bucks Outreach Coordinator. And that, well, not, not all markets. Um, are involved with Double Up Food Bucks. That is another um, wonderful resource we have here at the Marketing Association. And today, just what I wanted to go over briefly with everyone as we're starting to think about our, our season is the benefits that having membership with the New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association um, gives your market. And so we can dive right in, like the slide says. Um, our first resources are our rich online resources. We have, um, ooh, it's going a little slow for me. Is it showing up for everyone? There it is. We have um, actually three different websites available. Um, the first website we're looking at here is our newmexicofma.org website. We think of this as our industry website, um, which is available to members. This is where you can log in to the website and you can access logos. You can access registration for um, food safety trainings here, and you can find a wealth of information about farmers markets. And we'll go a little uh, deep, more deeply into that as we move forward. From that um, New Mexico Farmers Markets FMA website where you can log in, there is a place where you can update the information for your market. And in fact, anytime you have a schedule change throughout your season, we recommend you go in there and update it because at our farmersmarketsnewmexico.org website, which we're looking at right here, we have our find a market um, page where consumers can go and we think of farmers markets nm.org as our consumer website that has a, information for farmers market shoppers um, 
consumers can go here and look for their local farmers markets or if they're traveling through the state and they want to find what um, local food options are available to them, they can log into this find a market page and they can find your market and your dates and times, but only if you keep them updated at the uh, nmfma.org website. Um, if you have any issues logging into the NMFMA, or I'm sorry, the New Mexico FMA, Dot org website. Kat Baca is the name of our membership coordinator, and she can help get you um, logins and passwords if you've lost access to those. And then the third website that we um, manage here at the New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association is the Double Up New Mexico website. And this is the place where market managers can log in to do their double up reporting and where consumers can go and find out about how to utilize Double Up Food Bucks um, around the state. We're in the process of updating that website, so stay tuned because uh, there'll be a new one in the next couple of weeks for everyone to look at. Um, on our website, you can also find uh, some wonderful publications for your markets. Um, the first one I wanted to highlight is Growing our Go Growing Goodness Guide, which is a toolkit that you can use to develop growth goals for your market. And I recommend you go check that one out if you didn't get to pick up a hard copy at the conference. Um, we have it available online at the website. And we have these two other publications there as well. Our um, New Mexico Farmers Market Manager Resource Guide, where you can find, find a lot of answers to your questions about farmers markets. And then the Wallace Center's Getting Started with Farmers Markets. And as a market manager in Silver City, uh, for the five years that I did that, I would uh, go back to these and read through them year to year. And I always saw something new as I grew as a market manager, something that pertained to me that I could implement that year. So even if you've looked at them before, I rec recommend going back and just thumbing through them again. You'll also find on our website some lovely logos that you can utilize in social media. You can utilize them for your market and they can even be personalized. These are our three, or these are our two logos here. You can see our New Mexico Farmer's Market logo and our New Mexico Fresh Local logo. And then also a, a personalized logo. If your market's interested in having a personalized logo, if you don't have one already, you can reach out to Allison Penn um, and she can help to create that personalized logo for you. Thanks, Allison. She's also putting the links on where to find these, uh, uh, the places on the website where you can find these, the information I'm talking about today. And then some of the most exciting, uh, to me at least as a market manager, what most exciting benefits of the marketing association where the uh, market funding opportunities. Um, we have second year market grants for any market who is in their second year of, um, of running. Um, it's up to $500 of um, startup costs that you can utilize to buy signs or a fire extinguisher or um, anything your market might find it needs as it's, um, it's in its second year of running. And we also offer annually to all of our market members, our farmers market members, promotional funds. And this is a base of $300 for every market um, that's a member that they can utilize, they in, you have to invoice for it by uh, mid-November. So we ask you to spend the money first and then send us your receipts and then some proof of the promotions that you, um, that you created. 
And you can see here three examples of some promotions uh, and uh, newspaper, radio, all of your conventional promotional outreach is acceptable. And then you can see here, we even have a uh, Facebook post that was, um, that some of the money was spent to advertise. And we just ask that you mention either Double Up Food Bucks or Healthy Local Food um, in the advertising uh, when you create it. And again, you can reach out to me if you have any questions on um, ideas of how to use those promotional funds. And um, Allison just dropped the link to where you can find more information on that on the website. And here's the big question. How do you qualify for all of these wonderful benefits? Uh, first off, you need to pay your membership dues and those uh, were already due uh, for this year. And I know that Kat set out some reminders for any markets who hadn't paid their dues. We ask you to update your find a market information like I showed you um, on, the, on our website where you log in. And then, um, Lastly, we ask you at the end of the year to provide market data to us at the, by December 31st. And we're not gonna delve too deeply into the market data information here. We will definitely have a whole a manager forum devoted to that closer to the end of the year when the questions start to come up around that. Um, and we also have a page, if you're looking to to remind yourself what data you need to be collecting for the end of the year as your market starts up, there's a page on the website um, as well that goes over what and how to collect market data. We also, I just wanted to remind you that we offer liability insurance to your market as well, which basically covers slip and fall accidents um, that can be could possibly be traced back to something that you know happened at setup or um, a customer at your market. Um, we ask for fifteen dollars per vendor, and the per vendor is that average you give us as you apply for membership. How many average vendors you have throughout the year, and um, are the broker for that liability insurance? Um, can help you if you're on private property or on city property and you need to uh, have a, a insurance paperwork that states that uh, you are insured and name the town or the private property as additionally insured on your insurance paperwork. Um, that is something they can also offer for you. And that's that's it for me that just wanted to like I said remind everyone of the benefits and we'll have some time for questions and conversation at the end of the presentation um, I'm going to hand it off to Jenna now and she can she can get into the the fun stuff <laughs> thanks Jenna fun for some not for all <laughs> so fun for me um so I'm going to talk a little bit about opening day and social media. Super excited to see some people here. I tried to do my research on who was coming and look at your social media and try to have as best feedback as I could um, that I thought would be helpful for us getting into the big market season. So we're going to go ahead and just start off with um, just some basic like housekeeping that we would recommend. I would recommend for all of your social accounts. So if you could just take the time, I know it takes a while, but in the long run, having this stuff updated will really help you get people to the market and take out that um, barrier of people not knowing when the market is maybe or or what uh, what days. So just getting into your profile, and I have an example here of the Pecos Farmers Market's Instagram. It's great. Um, what they've done is they've added their hours and their time up into the bio here. So you can see very easily when you go to their page, you can see when the market is. You don't have to scroll to look for like a 
a post that has the information or a caption, it's all right there for you. Um, so I highly recommend if you have the time, you know, get into your Instagram or your Facebook and make sure that your hours are updated. Um, as just as Andrea said, make sure that your find a market hours are updated. If the find a market's not updated, Facebook and Instagram is great. Um, you know, that's your community that's following you there. So having your hours really accessible is really important. Um, <clears throat> another thing that's really great is if you could put your logo and your and your profile picture. It's super helpful to help people just kind of recognize when something pops up on their social media, who it's from, if it's a recognizable logo that you use at your market. Um, another thing is that I think the Pecos Farmers Market does really well here is they have a newsletter. So they've also updated, um, they've used their link for their web. You can put a website in here. You could put, you know, your Facebook page, um, but they've linked to be able to sign up for their newsletter so that you can get information specifically to your market right there. You can click on it and go and get signed up for their newsletter. So they're really trying to make like a concise way, like a really small little bit of information for you to get what they feel is the most important thing for their farmer's market. Um, another, I'm just kind of like also going through this, I've pulled a lot of examples because I myself am very visual and sometimes when you speak about social media, it's hard to know um, exactly what you're talking about unless seeing it. So through these slides, there's going to be a lot of examples. Um, if you have questions about stuff, please throw them in the chat and Allison will also, um, we'll make sure that we address those in our open forum to chat. Thank you, Scott. Um, the next slide here is just about creating content. So content and social media marketing, we just, content is basically anything you share. So it's whether it's a picture, um, something you type as a caption, um, a, a, a video, anything that you're sharing on your social media is content. So I pulled this really great little quote that I thought was really important. And it says, um, the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing entertain me, educate me, inspire me, delight me. Don't just market to me. So this is kind of a slide you can go back to and you're thinking about what do you want to post? Um, it doesn't always have to be like, our farmer's market is this day, come buy fruits and vegetables. Um, sometimes if it's something that's like special to your community, maybe um, I have an example because I spoke to Virginia. Um, I think the Pecos uh, high school basketball team they won um, the state championship or they were in districts. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, but um, maybe you're posting like congratulations to our basketball team. Um, just stuff that is, is relatable to your community uh, is always nice too, because you know your community best. Um, so I put some examples down here to help you if you're ever kind of curious about what to post. Um, sharing photos of products and vendors is always great. Uh, as you can see behind me here, I have a picture of Chile from the downtown growers market. Um, those are great. People love fruits and vegetables. People also really love dogs. So if you have, maybe there's a dog, I know there's, that's a touchy subject about dogs coming to the farmer's market, but dogs do really well on the internet. <laughs> I can see you giving a thumbs up, Ron. <laughs> so those are always great too. Um, I should have put that in here, pets and dogs. Um, you can do promotions. Um, if you want to talk about snap benefits, if you, if you take those, always a little information about that is super helpful. Um, encouraging followers to tag their friends and to share your posts is always great in your caption too. Um, you can always, if you're like, I don't know what to write, um, you can always say, hey, save this post, tag your friend, tell them to come to the farmer's market. It's really easy, simple way to just have a conversation um, with your audience and your community. Um, another great thing to do is to share posts from other vendors or community members. You're always welcome to reshare stuff that we share. Um, an easy one is like the harvest calendar. We do that every month. Uh, it just came out yesterday. That's a great one to reshare um, to help you post into your, so you have some more content to put onto your Facebook or to your Instagram. Um, and then the last one here is to repost, reshare your popular posts. If you have something that's done really, really well before, you, you noticed that people really liked it, they talked about it a lot, it's okay to post that again. Um, maybe not two days in a row, but if you know it's it's, it's from the year before, maybe you want to do kind of like a throwback or something that says, "Hey, you know, we did we had a really fun day at the farmers market. This band played," and you show it again um, to just kind of give people um, it's a little nostalgic. And if it did well before, it generally will do well again. Um, and then on our next slide here, um, I just kind of went into more of a 
um, sorry, more specific about opening day. Um, I think right now, a couple of people already do have their farmer's markets open. I think like Silver City, um, I know Carlsbad, Farmington, I'm not sure if those are open. Pecos isn't open yet. Um, but just trying to like build some excitement around your opening day. I put some ideas here on the slide. Um, you can use Instagram stories or Facebook stories to kind of create a countdown. Um, you can, you can, there's an option to do that in Instagram. And I'm more than happy to walk anybody through that if you're not very familiar with stories. And those are the ones that are kind of by the circle on your Instagram and they only show up for 24 hours. So those are a great way to just be like, don't forget our farmer's market is opening in three weeks. Um, and then you can kind of repost those weekly. Um, sharing behind the scene photos and videos of vendors sending up. If your market isn't open yet, you probably don't have pictures of them setting up this year. That's a great way to post older photos that you may have that you want to bring out and say like, hey, did you know that our farmers get here at 4 a.m. Um, for you? You know, showing a picture of that is really fun. Um, it gives a little bit of information for people, a little education um, on the setup of the, of the market, gets them kind of excited um, for what's to come. And then um, the next one I get into is kind of hashtags. So encouraging any of the followers in your community on social media to share their favorite farmer's market memories using a hashtag. So you can ask people, what was your favorite farmer's market memory? Tag us and you can use your own hashtag. Um, that's hashtag or pound as my younger brother and sister say that, it, that they don't know what that is. Um, hashtag. <laughs> You can, if you have one specific to your market, maybe you have, um, I'm going to make this up. Maybe you have uh, Pecos Farmers Market Rocks and that's your hashtag. Um, those are really great because a hashtag is essentially, a it's like a search engine. So when you look up that hashtag, if you're using that, anybody who looks up Pecos Farmers Market Rocks, they're going to find any pictures that you've posted or, or tagged. Um, so I really encourage you as a market to have your own hashtag, which would make it really easy for you to look up um, any information about if, it, if somebody tags your market with a hashtag. Um, you can always also tag um, like the at button, uh, another account too, um, or ask them to tag your account as well. Um, I'm happy to go over that too over in questions as well. Um, but that's a really great way for you to be able to find any information that's posted about your market or people going to your markets is, is you encouraging them to use a hashtag that you've created for your market. Um, another great example of that is um, we use, oh uh, gosh, I just drew a blank. We use New Mexico Fresh Local <laughs> and Local Foods Connects. Those are kind of a mouthful. So I have to when I type those out. But those are two great hashtags. You're always welcome to use those. Um, but those are ones that we use um, at NMFMA that help us to find um, any in, any posts about us or posts that maybe we've done in the past that we want to look up quickly via um, searching a hashtag. So that's an example of those. Um, and then I think I pretty much covered those. So what I'm going to do next is just I kind of pulled together a couple examples to just kind of show you what I've been talking about here, give you a little bit of a visual um, on some good examples. And I tried to pull a broad range of how um, you know your community. So not everything is gonna work for every market because you know what's gonna work best for your market and who you have coming to your market. People also have um, different sized communities. So sometimes posting a picture that you know everybody in your community will recognize can do um, much more for you than like, um, you know, a picture of, of fruits and vegetables. So right here, I have um, opening day at Downtown Growers. We know the Downtown Growers Market in Albuquerque is a really big farmer's market. Um, I think they have like 20,000 followers on Instagram. It's, it's, it's massive. They do, they, it's a huge account. Um, they also have a lot of partners. They have a lot of vendors. There's a lot of interaction and cross marketing. So they have a lot of resources when they're posting. But one thing that they do really well um, that I wanted to highlight here is they, they are good about posting pictures that are relevant to the market. So here you see just a picture. It says farmer's market today. That sign is so old. Who cares? It doesn't need to be perfect. It has <laughs> tape on it. Like it, it shows what you need to see though. It says farmer's market today. Um, so you know where it is. You can see the market. You can see the big old Hotel Blue 
Um, it kind of sets like a mood, like, oh, I know that when I see that sign, I'm going to the farmer's market. Um, another thing that they do really well with this post is they tag the location of where it's at. So if you look at where it says downtown growers, right underneath it says Robinson Park, that's where the market is. So when you go to look up, if you look up that location, this post will come up on Instagram. So you'll you'll see this. Um, so that gives you a little bit more visibility in social media. Um, and then I love what they write on their caption here. It's long. That's okay. It gives you all of the information that you need. Um, and what it does is it's, it, I'm looking at my notes here, sorry. Um, it has the description and it highlights the hours right there in the post. It lets you know when they're going to be there. Um, it has some great use of emojis, which are really fun on Instagram. It's casual. You know, they have a nice little face with sunglasses um, telling you, about the vendors that are going to be there. They're going to have an event. So they have yoga and they're tagging the person who's doing the yoga. Um, then they're also going to have live music with the DJ and they tag the DJ in there. So that's giving them more visibility too with the opportunity for the yoga instructor and for the DJ to also see this post and share it on their social media. So it's a good use of tagging there. Um, it, it gives you direction to go to their map and see their list of vendors. So it's also kind of telling you to like, stay inside of um, their circle, kind of like go to our website, look at our map, um, directing you to, to look them up and find find more information about what you need. Um, and then the last one, which I really love is questions. Um, visit us at the info booth at the corner of 8th and Central. So it tells you, you know, if, if you don't know what to do when you get here, like we're here, there's people here to help you, which I think is really important. So um, maybe you're scared. Maybe you've never been to a farmer's market before. You don't know what to do. Maybe you have SNAP benefits that you want to use. Um, so that, that gives you a place to kind of know that you can go and get help. Um, so I think they do a really great job of all that explanation there. And then the next example I have is a Facebook example. This is Silver City's Farmer's Market. Um, and they have a really great picture of the market. So you can see in there, there's all these starters of, um, they have like a little sign that shows the pollinators um, and what types of plants are available there. They have a great use of their logo. It's a little cropped, but that's okay. It can be adjusted, but you know that that's their logo in the little circle. Um, it says the name. Then it also has, I went to their about section um, and kind of highlighted this photo here. So it shows contact info for them and it has their website. So just a good example of keeping your, your information up to date on Facebook so that if somebody wants to go on their own to find you, um, they have the information there readily available and you don't kind of lose them. Um, on the page. So I think so the Silver City Farmers Market is a great example of using a photo that's, you know, relatable to the community and being able to see like what the plants are that you would want to get there in your community. And then the next picture I have is from Aztec's Farmers Market. And I think what they did here was really creative. Um, they went ahead and they just created an image that had the information right in their profile picture. And, you know, this is, it's very simple. It just says every Wednesday and where it's at, um, which is great because somebody can look at this and see, oh, all the information is there visually in their picture. They don't have to um, click down to the about section um, or go, go down into the hours. So that was like a really great hack or use of like creativity to kind of get that information right into their profile. Um, so I thought that was a great example of what they did there. They have their logo, which is really great. And then another thing that Aztec Farmers Market has taken advantage of, and all of these features are free on Facebook. So um, this featured right here at the top, as you can see to the bottom right, it says featured and it has a, two different posts and it says Aztec Farmers Market, a double up food bucks helps New Mexicans bring home more locally grown food. So there's one post there and then there's another post next to it that talks about um, seniors and WIC participants. So what they've done is they've used a pin feature so that when you go to their page, right at the top of their Facebook page, they have their moat, what they feel is probably their most important or most needed informational posts right at the top of their Facebook page. So that's a really cool feature um, to, to use on, on your Facebook page. Um, we do it on ours. Ours will usually be the I will I'll post uh, proof supplier programming applications um, because, you know, that's the time of the month or I'll post our harvest calendar for the month because, you know, I want people to be able to, they're going to go to our page to be able to see right there at the top, um, maybe something they came back to look for. So I think Aztec Farmers Market did a really great job of doing that on their Facebook. 
Um, and then we have two more. The next one we have is an Instagram page. This is the Taos Farmers Market. And I clicked on this one because I thought this was a, a great example of showing they also in their Instagram bio have their hours, which is really great. Um, they also use highlights, which are these little tiny circles underneath. So there's these one, two, three, there's five little circles. There's 2023 20, hearts, food and fun, why shop? So these are really similar to the pinned post I just showed you before in Facebook. You can highlight your stories here and people can come back to this um, and see information from the past right at the top of your page. And you can categorize these specific to what makes sense for your market. Um, so these are a great, another great way to highlight past information at the top that makes information accessible for anybody coming to your page. Another thing that I think the Taos Farmers Market did that was really resourceful is they've used this, this program called Canva that I've talked about before. I talked about it, I think, in the in our our um our conference in March. Um, and I, I I think Allison can probably throw a link in there. That'd be really helpful, Allison. Um, it's a free program and they provide these templates for you. So these top three pictures, these are templates that are provided on this, on this program called Canva. And you basically can just put your information in there. Um, so they're really great way if you don't feel like, you know, if you're not creative or you don't have the time, they're very easy and they're beautiful. They look great. They feel current. Um, they feel designed. So you can, you can use those um, if you don't have pictures and you just want to use something a little bit more like graphic and get some information out there. Um, they're great if you want to like, um, like promote an event. Maybe you have a band coming in or something like that. You know, you could just switch this out to say band playing at the farmer's market and put the date in. Um, so they're a really great quick resource um, for you to create a content or a post without feeling like you don't have maybe um, the creative capabilities to do it. Um, okay, and then lastly, I have the farmer's market or Artovino's Desert Crossing. And this is the Facebook page. Um, again, they have to the, the right, the picture on the right has a great use of the pinned post at the top here. So where it says featured, they updated their Instagram. So they put the pin up there so you could go to their Instagram um, and follow their Instagram. And then they highlighted an event. Um, it looks like maybe it hasn't been updated since February, which is fine, but the event was in February. Um, so you can see there, but they are posting regularly. So down here, there is another event that they've posted. But one thing I wanted to highlight that I thought the farmer's market at Artovino's did really well is they took advantage of this hours section here. So if you look down, there's like, I have it kind of box outlined here. It says closed now, but when you open that, you can put your hours in there. Um, and that's a searchable feature on Facebook. So if somebody was searching for you, these hours would pop up just like you would search for any business. Maybe you're looking for pizza late night. You want to know what, if it's open. Um, this is a great way to show your hours of your farmer's market as well. Um, and all of these things that I showed you, they're free. Uh, it's social media and they're free. So I just wanted to take some time to highlight, give you some examples. These will all be in the slide that'll be available for you. And I wanted to let you know that I'm always available if you ever have questions or you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook and you're, you know, maybe you want to tag something or you need some hashtag help. I'm the person posting and behind the messaging. So always feel free to reach out to me. Um, always, always feel free to tag us in a post too. That's like just at NMFMA, um, New Mexico's Farmers Markets. Um, we will reshare. I try to reshare everything in, in a very fair way for the community on what's coming up, um, what makes sense. If I haven't shared it yet, I probably have it saved to share for a special post about something you tagged us in. So almost every single thing that we get tagged in, we share. Um, that's relevant to the community and I think will be really supportive for your markets. So always feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can call me. Virginia called me last week. We had a great chat about some questions she had. So I'm available and I'm here to help. Um, and thank you guys. All right. So staying true to the name of Market Manager Forum, our presentation's over, but we're not going anywhere. We'd love to invite you to 
turn on your mics and cameras and uh, ask us questions. Thank you, Jenna and Andrea, for your information. I know any anytime social media comes up, I start getting ideas on on how it works and what what you should be doing. Ron, you had some great uh, comments in the chat on templates. I I think the very first thing that I wanted to add is we have been talking about creating some templates to make available to market managers. So uh, we want to keep the spirit of that idea alive in this session. And yeah, that's very important. Um... I have a website for my farm and I was looking at this and looking at that. And then my wife said, just get the template, throw the pictures in there and write some stuff and be done because I can, I can do this for weeks, you know, instead of a day. Yeah. It makes me think of that expression. Uh, finished is better than perfect. Um, which makes me think of the downtown growers market sign with the tape and it's kind of messy and it doesn't have to be this polished thing. Yes, definitely. I, I agree. I think I, I can get caught up in that. I think all creatives can get caught up in that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm happy to work on that on, on our end um, as, as, as far as like templates go and also happy to suggest or put out some um, suggestions of some templates that I think on Canva are really easy. So it kind of narrows it down also as well. Are there any other well, questions before we? Well, I saw Carlsbad said they're not going to start till June 15th. I mean, I know our law last frost date is, is uh, <clears throat> coming up on the 15th of May. And so I was just wondering, why so late? Y'all are so much warmer down there. Well, I, I, I know sorry, I, I'm she might in be on Clovis, and our market's open pretty late also. So I, I'm, I'm eager. Yeah, we opened too early last year, and that was a problem because... Um, it's, it's uh, I guess, disappointing for people when they come in and they're like, where's this and where's that? I'm like, I got some starts. You want to buy a flower? You know. <laughs> yeah, that is something to think about as you're advertising and really when you're heightening your advertising is to let people to, especially with Double Up Food Bucks, I always recommend to start your Double Up Food Bucks advertising to hit it really hard when there's apples and chilies and food at market that people will come and use their snap. They'll Actual be looking food. when they want to use, yeah, when they're coming for the first time to market. And then, and then you can start to train your your customers, they know when they come in, you know, the earlier months of the season, they're going to find bread and eggs and, you know, other items, but that that food really starts rolling in. And, you know, August is when we do the Local Foods Connect month um, promotions. And that is really the time where we're going to see a lot of the food at market and that'll run through October. So, you know, you can start working on your Facebook page. That was great. Jenna, all of that insight. I learned a lot listening to your presentation on, on how, the look of the page itself. But then, like, like Jenna said, post those pictures of the food that's there. Let people know it's there. Well, that, that same challenge of seasonality, and there's no food now, but we've got starter plants. Uh, I would just say play that to your advantage. Make that part of your, your content strategy and embrace that you know, certain things aren't always in season. And that kind of what makes a trip to the, the local farmer's market a fun surprise. It's different every time, uh, potentially. Yeah, my yeah, Victoria is back. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> I, I was actually typing on the chat, but now that I could kind of jump on board, I think that's one of the struggles out here in Carlsbad is um, farmers are scarce out here. So um, what we're since I'm new to the program, this is my first year. One of the things that we're going to work on is uh, conducting a survey at the end of the season to see what our constituents uh, would prefer, whether it's a Saturday um, schedule or weekend uh, schedule or, um, you know, like uh, uh, Ron said, you know, starting in May. Um, I would prefer to start sooner, uh, but I know that we have June as our designated time. Um, so yeah. You know, we actually, uh, down in Silver City, we changed from a May to October market to a year round market. And you know, that's a good point, Victoria. It did take us a couple years 
of people saying, oh, you're open year round now. They'd come back because they had been so trained to come on the first week of May and that we were done the last week in October. Even if we you put have... signs, even if we hit social media with the information, people just get conditioned. And so, you know, do you have greenhouses? I'm sorry, do you all have greenhouses down there? Who are you? Andrea? No, and that's why we became a year-round market is because oh, we had, you do. Had, um, yeah, sprouts and, and, uh, and, and other items that weren't, you know, that were locally produced food, but not necessarily grown. But we do have, and awesome. we do have some farmers who have heated greenhouses through the winter so they could keep food coming through the whole season. It just took a minute for people to, to get used to, to the change in dates. Market shoppers are creatures of habit, for sure. <laughs> I think that's such a great point, Andrea, to like about building that habit. And now though too, because like, you know, um, still I, I'm thinking social media posting, um, but to, to your point, Ron, like, and what Scott said and Victoria, like, you know, kind of, getting people into that habit of going to the market because it's getting people there. Right. Um, and maybe they're they're once they're kind of trained in that like ritual of they're going there, maybe they're not buying produce that first time, that second time, you know, maybe they're just going for, I don't know if you have vendors that sell them, um, you know, a burrito or, or whatever, just, but kind of building that community of, of setting them up to have that space to gather um, I think is also like something to think about too, when, when promoting it, like you might not have the, the vegetables, but you have space for people to gather and talk and hang out. Um, and so you can always like, maybe try to find a way to touch into to those parts, um, when you don't have as much produce at the beginning. So that, as Andrea said, when you do, they're there. And, and you know, one of the ways that I found to really get the word out was to stand at that information booth and talk to people as they came through. You know, we can do, we can put up signs, we can do social media. Word of mouth seems to be the best way to get information out at market. And so talking to your customers is a nice way. Holding the flyer and saying, hey, did you know we're starting a month early next year you know, at the end of the season? Do we have well, any? markets today i'm sorry i'm curious to we didn't quite hear from everyone on when their market was starting are there any other year-round market managers anybody whose market started already for the season no everybody's going to start and just some some sooner than others i guess yeah i'm uh actually trying to build a um uh, winter greenhouse this year so for just at my farm so maybe that's something that I can try to push uh, going forward but uh, if it's just me it's not going to be that much although I do feel like I'm cheating because uh, some of you guys have to stand in a parking lot but uh, my uh, farmer's market is at the winery so uh, I do have a draw with the wine and uh, we have music each, each time which we just got set up um, and then I have uh, my other market that I'm not a manager of that I participate in is at the VVAC winery. So we have the VVAC on Wednesday and the Black Mesa on Friday, and I enjoy that quite a bit. But this year, I'm not going to be able to have my beverage as a manager. <laughs> right. Yeah, we recommend waiting till the end of market before you start. Yeah. It makes the day go <laughs> smoother. That's true. It helps me keep the math right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, our market season in Silver City start, or I'm sorry, our music season starts this. So we've been going year round, but we still only have the music from May to October. And so that is a draw at this time of year is to have a, a band at market every week. And that is one of the topics we've got on our list for these forums is how to kind of engage with the community to help with your outreach partnering with bands or um, the local library to do like kids story time and some of that having a, a winery or a vineyard as the, the location certainly gives you some bonus points to kind of draw people in usually I've got my Vivoc 
cap sitting here from my, my last visit to that spot. Uh, awesome place. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to kind of get into some of those strategies too. Um, Andrea, do we want to talk about some of the future sessions too, before we wrap up today to talk about some of our ideas and, and hear from all of you in, in terms of what you want to get out of these sessions? Yep, I, that's a great idea, Scott. I'd also love to hear about timing of these sessions because we want really want to make sure that we're making them accessible for everyone. We already got a little feedback that there are some markets on Tuesdays now at this time and that some folks would have liked to have joined and couldn't. So this won't be the set time going forward. You, do you wanna share some of those ideas, Scott, that we've, we've put out for monthly forums? Yeah, sure. I'm looking at the list now. Um, some of these we we haven't designated a topic because we'd love to keep it open ended and just host a forum and hear from you all how things are going throughout the state. Um, but some of the topics that we've discussed are uh, our Good Food NM texting uh, platform where we text uh, people throughout the state uh, and update them about when your market is open and how to take advantage of things like Fresh RX and Double Up Food Bucks. Um, we are also potentially going to do a deeper dive on those promotional funds, how to use, use those dollars before you lose them, um, how to plan and execute a holiday market. That might be something we're talking about in October. For those of you who want to do a, a Christmas or holiday themed uh, market in the December month, uh, let's see, market governance is another big topic accounting. So we may have a, an accountant and tax expert join us to address all of your questions as it gets closer to tax season. And then Andrea mentioned end of year data for markets. That's another topic that we can dig into during these sessions as well. Um, Allison, Jenna, Andrea, am I forgetting anything that we brainstormed on a week or so ago? I'd, I'd love to hear from uh, the managers that are here today if they had any ideas or um, needs that they'd like to see presented in our forums. Anything you're grappling with now? I'm kind of like Victoria. This is my first year, so I, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, did you have any questions from the, from the presentation today of any of the benefits so you can get your market started right this year to make sure that you're utilizing those? I took a lot of notes, so. Great, and you know, you can always, of course, you have all of our contact information and reach out at any time, especially for new managers. I mean, especially for anyone, but new managers, we're really here to support you too, so reach out. Yeah, that's, that's really our, our big overarching goal by creating this space every single month is uh, giving our market managers a, a community where you can pick each other's brains, get to know one another. And then uh, as we get through market season and our annual conference comes up in March, we can have a big market manager get together and continue in, in, in real life, as they say. So this is cool. I, I, I want to thank you all personally for attending our, our first session of the season and, and taking time to, to join us and, and hear our presentation. Um, so if that's, if that's it, we're finishing 10 minutes early and we can uh, all part ways and get back to planning our epic market seasons throughout New Mexico. I, I have one quick question for everyone. How did this time work for you? Was it it's okay. This was a, well. You're here, so it obviously worked. Moving I forward, plug this time uh, because uh, Wednesday I'm busy, and uh, Friday I'm busy, and Saturday I'm busy, and Sunday I'm busy, and I have not even got anything in the ground yet. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and after lunch. So, but if we were to do them at closer to three three p.m., would that be still an accessible time? Just because of the folks who have markets uh, on Tuesdays, they usually go till about one. And so I was thinking if we do stick with a Tuesday or a Thursday, maybe later in the day. Yeah, I like Tuesday any time's good for me, but. Okay. When market starts for, for here in Farmington, um, our Tuesday markets from uh, four to six. Oh, oh. yeah. Shoot. It's one of those things. Every, there's shit. Hopefully, the market all the time, every day. We we can't. We won't. 
So we'll switch these around and hopefully we'll be able to hit as many you know, people's schedules as we can. <clears throat> And you do put these online, right? I saw something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're, we're going to build out a YouTube playlist with these. And furthermore, we're even talking about developing some little mini courses with like curriculum where you can go in and learn more about social media, best practices for market managers. So that is a, a bigger project that's probably going to be part of a, a future website uh, maybe in the next year or so. So creating more uh, cohesive resource hub that you all can access in addition to the resources that we, we shared with you today. All right. Well, if no one has anything else, I guess that's a wrap. And thank you again, everyone, for attending. Shout out to Nicole for even attending in her car. So Thanks for uh, carving out time to uh, reap the benefits of being a member of NMFMA. And if you need us in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us.